And third and final question, who would you most want as a dinner guest? Anyone. Only one. Only one. Oh, man. Past. Anyone dead? Anyone. Anyone you want. Michael Jackson Einstein. Well, right. There's only one person. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really interesting conversation. Yeah. Choose one. No. Choose one. Um, I think I would go for Einstein. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Because he was mind blowing. I, I don't know, man. Physics is one of my big um, to go to in conversations. Um, also, when I, I go in, in my spare time watching movies, series, documentaries, mm. um, whenever there's a physics aspect to it, I always choose that. And it could be a nature documentary, seeing how things balance or whatever. Or, um, oh, this is what I wanted to share. Um, in 1977, NASA sent out two satellites, two probes, called Voyager 1 and 2, which is for me, the, the goal and, and the accomplishment is bigger than the first step on the moon. And people will say like, why? The first step on the moon is, but if you realize what this was, in Voyager 1 and 2, they put in golden LP on it the history in a, in a, in a uh, short way about humanity about the ancient Egyptians even before that until now um, the, the way we look the way we sing, the way we dance everything is on it I think like 26 songs from all over the world are compact on that golden LP now what is, what is so special about it is that first of all they used the, the laws of physics to get it out of the solar system which is mind blowing because nobody else in our knowledge ever done that. Yeah. There is no alien sending someone to us, something mm -hmm. to us, but we send something out. Yeah. And to be sure they, they made two of them, two satellites. Now the mesmerizing thing is that if we send it straight out of the solar system, it would take 35 to 40 years. Now they used the planets spinning the, the, the gravity around those planets as a slingshot. Yeah. So very simple said is that when you're standing here and you spin, and someone else will come to you and grab your hand and throw you out, you will get acceleration. Right. And this is basically the same thing. So what happens is these planets, they spin, yeah. this satellite comes into the gravity field of these planets, but they don't go too close and they don't go too far, but just in this range, mm -hmm. and they get acceleration. Now, this is one side, yeah. is that we're living on Earth, and then you have Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. If they're all in one line, it doesn't work. Because when you go from here, this planet will already be a little bit further, and this planet will be a little further, and this planet will be a little further. Mm. So in the time of Voyager, 1977, it was the only time in 150 years that all the planets were in a certain what? Trajectory yeah. Yeah. to make this happen. That's crazy. So they send it, yeah. and a couple years later it reached Jupiter. Yeah. And a couple years later it reached the next one yeah. and the next one. So the amount of calculation that goes behind it, that's already insane. Yeah, you can't even comprehend. Right? But also what what you what we talked about in this in this thing is that sometimes something happens and it brings you on one path and some mm. There's so many things that you can't calculate, but it still happened. They went to planet to planet to planet, and Voyager 2, not, yeah. uh, not Voyager 1, is the first man-made thing that is in interstellar space, outside our solar system. Wow. With the idea that maybe someone somewhere will find this record, this LP, Yeah. Listening to it, 
using it, knowing that on planet Earth, we are there. If that doesn't give you goosebumps, I don't know. Bit like, what? I don't know. Yeah. And I, this yeah. documentary is called The Farthest. I, I, I really went emotional. When I saw this, I, I really felt like this is... You just explaining it makes me feel kind of like... It's, it's that crazy. Yeah. And I feel it's big, bigger than the first step on the moon. That's huge. I feel that. This, and this is why I love physics. Yeah. Why I wanted to sit down with Einstein to talk about this kind of stuff. General rel relativity. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. This, because this guy, he... This, early 1900s uh -huh. he already thought about things that we are still studying back what he said yeah 100 years later we're still using his knowledge genius and there's nobody else at this moment who who got further than him mm. yeah also the the idea of quantum mechanics quantum physics that we're not living in in four dimensions but maybe in 11 or 15 dimensions it goes so beyond the, the, the things that we know. Yeah, I think it kind of gives you that relationship of all this kind of, it's huge, right? All these yeah. kind of possibilities, yeah. and we're just here, temporary yeah. little beings, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's, that kind of contrast yeah. is what mo makes those things so great, and just, it's hard for so our minds to... One, one, one extra thing that yeah. came out of it is that um, after Voyager 2 uh, finished, uh, Neptune, the last planet. Yeah. Carl Sagan, who was a famous uh, physicist in the 80s, he said, like, let's turn Voyager around and take a picture back, back to the trajectory that he was doing. And um, there's nothing scientific about it, it's just more emotional about mm. it. Let's see what. It, so, what happened is that there was one picture. And you see a little bit the different planets, and then this uh, physicist that was studying it, it was like, where is Earth? And then they, she sees one array of sunlight. And in that one thing, she sees one tiny blue spot. And this is where Carl Sagan famous thing comes from, the pale blue dot. And then he goes into a poetic kind of thing, is that this is all history. Every person that you met, every uh, situation that occurred in the past or now, is in that one pale blue dot that you see on that picture. Uh, Shivers. I get, I get. This is what makes me really, really happy. To, yeah. to know, actually, to be humble enough yeah. to realize that we're nothing and everything at the same time because exactly that. we are just made of everything that is around if you know your physics and your chemistry we are star stuff yeah. and that idea that oh this is actually to go back to the first question is what you want to do before you die I want to answer is what you want to do when you die is send me into space in a deep frozen state for like 50, 60 years, so that this spaceship goes out of our solar system and then let it go. Let my body go into whatever there is. That is my dream, is that I want to be somewhere in space. I don't want to here, I want to die there. Wow. That is. And that's such a beautiful kind of metaphor representation of your whole journey. Yeah. Right? And on that note,